this video we will be looking at LM286 low voltage audio power amplifier we will be observing the data sheet the schematic diagram and the board layout and I will be using Eagle EDA for this purpose and this video we will, uh, will be a two video series the first video the today's video will be discussing the data sheet for this IC and then the schematic diagram in Eagle and in the next video we will be looking at that the board layout and finally the practical hardware demo of a circuit along with speaker test I should be telling that this video is very much useful if you are trying to build any analog based circuit and it is to be also noted that I am not an expert in this field but trust me if you do follow all the points which I will mention in, in today's video and in the next video are very much important whenever you are trying to build any analog based circuits and you should be following them for getting your best results from your analog circuit. So let's not waste any more time and just directly jump on to the datasheet from Texas Instruments of the LM286. So if you uh, see the schematic, this schematic can be very useful if you are in trying to uh, understand intuitively how the circuit is working. Uh, we can we will be arriving uh, at this later on but first let's uh, move on below and observe the electrical characteristics to see which uh, parameters are important for us so the firstly we can see the operating supply voltage is 4 to 12 volts the maximum power output you can observe is around 0.5 to 0.7 watts and this can be achieved on the condition of supply voltage is 9 volt and load impedance of 8 ohms so this is the ideal condition for getting the maximum power output from this amplifier IC now the voltage gain is variable it can be variable for 26 dB to 46 dB and how we will do that we will be looking as we move further also the power supply injection ratio can be also improved and other parameters the input resistance into bias current bandwidth you can see here again moving below now here comes the very much important important graphs the typical characteristic graphs so the first graphs we see is for the supply voltage versus supply current since we saw that 9 volts is is, is an ideal is an ideal condition so for 9 volts you can see it uh, the, uh, the circuit draws around 4.25 milliampere which is pretty much handy if you are trying to make a battery operated circuit so 4.25 is very much battery friendly current and the second figure is the power supply injection versus frequency whenever you are trying to build any open based like amplifier you very well understand that power supply injection ratio should be as much high as possible so you can see when there is no bypass capacitor so when there is no bypass capacitor power supply injection ratio is low and as you as you increase that bypass capacitor value 50 microfarad uh, uh, for the practical purposes we use 47 microfarad so it is close to 50 microfarad so under that conditions you can get the maximum PSRR in dB you can see at very low frequencies you can achieve a very high PSRR value so C7 if you now move on the pin diagram you can understand that pin 7 is the C, uh, the bypass pin and here the C7 is the capacitor at this bypass pin so we, I will be using the 47 microfarad bypass capacitor which will be tied to ground so again uh, moving on further you can observe the output voltage versus the supply voltage so supply voltage on x axis output voltage on y axis and you can very well understand that this 9 volt under 9 volt the 8 ohm is the ideal load don't think that the uh, uh, 16 ohm load or RL tending to infinity will uh, will give you higher higher watts. You know, don't think like that. If you use you know, higher impedance loads, your output will get clipped off and will not get your satisfactory performance. The most ideal is the 8 ohm load. So under 8 ohm load, you can see the maximum peak to peak we can achieve as output voltage is 6 volts. 9 volts corresponding to this is 6. So 8 ohm load we can get 6 volts peak to peak and the voltage gain versus frequency now I talked earlier that voltage gain can be variable voltage gain can vary from 26 dB to 46 dB so 26 dB can be achieved when there is no uh, capacitor between pin 1 and 8 but if there is a capacitor of 10 microfarad between pin 1 and 8 the voltage gain can rise up to 46 dB so again moving on the on the pin diagram 
the when there is a capacitor across beam 1 and 8 the gain increases up to 46 dB if you now observe the schematic diagram intuitively you can understand that if there is a capacitor here you can bypass you, you are effectively bypassing this resistor and therefore the gain is increased so this schematic is very much helpful when you are trying to understand your circuit so always try to keep the data sheet with you you may try to uh, take a print out of this data sheet so that you can understand it better on the other graphs like the total harmonic distortion versus frequency uh, you cannot expect uh, too much uh, too much low total harmonic distortion from this uh, from this very old ic but nevertheless uh, it works it works satisfactorily and uh, uh, it, it it will work fine just it will work just fine also other graphs dissipation device dissipation powers now comes the detailed description so you are you have the the block diagram it's a low uh, lm 36 is a low uh, mono amplifier can boost a variety of applications gain can be modified from 20 to 200 by placing a resistor and capacitor in pin 1 and 8 now moving on further you have the device functional modes so in the device functional modes you can first observe the gain of 20 20 so for the gain of 20 here is no capacitor across pin 1 and 8 so this is the simplest circuit you can you can you can build with if you now move on further you can see gain control to make the amplifier versatile two pin 1 and 8 are provided for gain control within 1 and 8 at the 1.35 kilo ohm resistor sets the gain at 20 or 26 dB if a capacitor is put across pin 1 and 8 by passing the 1.35 kilo ohm the gain will go up to 200 or 46 dB if a resistor is placed in series with the capacitor the gain can be set from any value to from 20 to 200 so the point here if a resistor is placed in series with the capacitor therefore if we can use a variable variable resistor uh, if a potentiometer if we use so you can then vary the gain from 20 to 200 or 26 dB to 46 dB you can set to set it to any any value as per the uh, the, the resistor you are uh, the resistance value you are using so again if you move on below lm 36 with a gain of 200 so see the it's a fixed gain of 200 so the capacitor is directly used here no resistor or, or resistor is used and uh, the bypass capacitor is used and we will talk to that we will be using the 47 microfarad again moving on below you can observe the gain of 50 since since they have used the fixed gain of 50 so they have used a fixed 1.2 kilo ohm but since we will be making this variable therefore we will be using a potentiometer a 10k potentiometer in place of this 1.2 kilo ohm resistor also moving on below you can other you can have other applications like wine bridge but uh, these are not for our focus right now also you have the bus boost i'll be not using this circuit uh, i'll be not driving uh, too much low frequencies from this from this very little ic and uh, also the thing to be noted that i am using here the smt version of the ic so it might get very hot if you are uh, if you are trying to uh, bring out low frequencies from this little IC so that's why I'll, I'll be skipping this circuit you may try as your experiment for your homework purposes you can you can use it but anyway the circuit so you have talked about now the all the basic the basic things the fundamental things which we will be requiring for making our circuit so if we now move directly at the circuit diagram here we, I am using Eagle EDA so you can see the IC the lm 36 here see the bypass capacitor of 47 microfarad is attached here now this is the variable resistor 10 kilo ohm variable resistor and in series with the capacitor of 10 microfarad between pin 1 and 8 now this is the supply and this is the ground and this is the uh, input the input capacitor which uh, which will get rid of any dc coming coming to this input so this is the 104 or 100 nanofarad uh, DC blocking capacitor. It it, it, uh, it is to be used uh, mandatorily to avoid any any DC coming into this amplifier. And for better purposes, we can have a a, a capacitor from from the inverting terminal to ground.
you can also ground pin number 2 directly to ground uh, as you can see in the in the circuit in every circuit here you can see the pin number 2 is directly grounded but for having better performance it, it can be this this capacitor can be used for for getting better performances and and finally this is the uh, the output capacitor i have used 470 470 microfarad cooler capacitor you can can use 100 microfarad or 220 microfarad and uh, as per the value of the capacitor you can uh, you can uh, hear the frequency response is changing as as you change the value of this capacitor and uh, obviously as mentioned before 8 ohm loads is ideal so at the terminals 1 and 2 the 8 ohm loads uh, speaker load should be used and this this rc forms the uh, bushrod cell of the zobel network so uh, this in this rc network uh, typically 100 nanofarad 4.7 4.7 ohm register is uh, it can work fine on this also you can use a 2 2.2 2.2 ohm register uh, this this is not of a critical value you can use uh, a low any low value uh, below 10 ohms so this rc network can should be used talking about the other co other mandatory components the power supply the power supply capacitors this is very very important power supply decoupling capacitor is very very much important and uh, this capacitor forms a bank so the first we can have a a high value capacitor like this of the 100 microfarad then a medium value like 100 nanofarad and then finally a uh, low value a very low value capacitor like 2 picofarad is well, uh, these are not these are not a very critical value but you should be using a wide range of values you can like use a 220 microfarad here you can use uh, suppose 330 nanofarad and here you can use uh, suppose 15 picofarad so these values are flexible but this section is very much important this power supply decoupling capacitors are very much important for any any analog based circuits this is to be mandatorily used and you should be using this now uh, talking about this section, this section is nothing but we have just used two kind of inputs. The first input is just the direct audio input. So here if you attach the, the audio input, so the audio input can go through here. Here you can have a, a, a shorter a shorter cap. So this will short this two and the input audio can directly go to the amplifier through this input input potentiometer and secondly we have a condenser microphone a condenser microphone based input so for condenser microphone based input uh, this this two this two will be shorted using the shorter cap and so after this 100 nanofarad capacitor so it will go then to the amplifier so any any of the uh, either of the modes can be used either it can be a direct audio input by shorting here shorting these two pins or it can be a condenser microphone input by shorting this two, these two pins here. So this is the overall circuit which we will be using. Now uh, this circuit is drawn in the in the eagle and will be this circuit will be uh, provided in the uh, in the link given in the description below. You can observe the circuit from there. Now in the second part of this video, we will be discussing about the PCB layout for this circuit. And since this video is getting too much long, I will be covering in the next part. So run this circuit, try to practice it, read the datasheet again and again and we will be seeing in the next video. Thank you.